close your eyes for a second for me. And I'm going to say two words, and I want you to look into your heart and your mind and tell me what feelings come from the word college, the word university. Do you think of campus scene and friends and working hard studying? Do you think about sports? Do you think about the great parties? <gasps> well, forget about it. I was told not to tell you about that. Or do you think about trying to pay for your child's education? Do you think about the things that Stephanie talked about this morning? Do you think about the fear about your own career and have, do you have the right kind of education? Or are you really depressed over the student debt that you now have? Uh, Lynn and I came up with, um, since we were throwing around uh, a lot of acronyms yesterday, we're gonna, we came up with the idea of um, um, D, WD, which is uh, debtors with degrees. <laughs> and after Stephanie's talk this morning, I want to add a new D, which is depressed debtor with degrees. <laughs> so, uh, So I want to just tell you about my feeling about uh, public higher education. I guess I really do have the purest idea of what higher education should be, could be. Um, I have great pride in uh, the 15 years that I spent at uh, UC Berkeley and all of the accomplishments of public higher education. But I must tell you, amidst all this laughing, that I have a deep and residing anger about the status quo. And I intend to spend the rest of my life fighting the status quo, God willing. No kidding. I'm serious. And, um, and uh, so uh, basically, uh, for 15 years at this place, I, uh, I signed, personally signed, close to 10 thousand contracts that brought in approximately one billion dollars. And these were social entrepreneur type of agreements in its finest, and I want to tell you about that, OK? Um, that, but before we get into the specifics of that, just if you would consider Every university in America, consider the hard assets, consider the soft assets. Virginia, Illinois, North Carolina, they're all cousins, they're all brothers, they were all created at the same time. And um, this particular university, which I said I wasn't going to say that in the world listening, UC Berkeley was number three, who do you think was number four? Guess. Anybody want to guess who's number four in the world? <laughs> Anybody want to guess? <laughs> Cardinal, it's Cardinal Keller. Yes, but we're going to skip past that, okay? But the name, um, the name of what I'm going to tell you about is, it's, it, you won't get it intuitively. Uh, I'll have to explain it to you. It's kind of a goofy name, but it, it's going to be easy to remember. And, it is public service contracts, which basically means this. It is taking the assets of public institutions. By the way, and it just dawned on me, thanks to Mei Lin, that I can say to you, do you know who owns the assets of public universities in this country? Guess what? It's not the administrators. It's you. You, you, the people own the assets. You, the people, own the laboratories, the libraries. You, the people, own that. And 
to put that into service for a public good sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Doesn't it intuitively sound good? Doesn't it intuitively sound good? Of course. Why wouldn't we do that? And if you put that in public service under contract, which brought money into the university, does, isn't that fair? That's the kind of thing that I signed. That's what I was basically responsible for. So let me just take you through it kind of quickly. Okay, this is the view of most people's university, in my opinion. It's like behind the wall. It's very prestigious there. I have no idea what prestige means. Do you? I'm so sick of hearing prestige, it makes me gag. Stephanie. You know, Stanford's prestige, Cal's prestige, the professors are prestige, the dog is prestige. <laughs> you know, um, think about Ramin's talk yesterday. I absolutely think it was spectacular. You nailed it. And I'm not going to re-give it today, but I told him this morning, I said, I think what we, you and I are to do is go around the nation and on a public speaking tour. Um, the ivory tower. I'll be the comedy guy, you be the, uh, the, the uh, there's the uh, ivory tower, which is the publication of, hey, I do the jokes around here, okay? The, the ivory tower is the special by uh, CNN, and um, most people think about that. They don't think about what's going on, okay? So let me just take you through this, okay? This is my view of the potential of the spirit of light. What is it made up of? Okay, that was a little too fast. The hard assets, okay? Assets, the labs. The people, the faculty, the staff. The spirit, which when you think about this, it's the alumni, it's the parents, it's the students. Those are all assets. Again, some lawyer, okay? What are the possibilities the local community public service is where you enter into a contract with a governmental agency anywhere in the world nonprofits businesses for profit in california we are a public benefit corporation which means corporations big corporations can invest money in social causes regardless of what the shareholders care about it. There's 26 other states in the union that have public benefit corporations. Public benefit corporations want to do good in the world. They don't know that universities are in the business of providing that. That's what kind of gets me ticked, you know? Um, and um, so examples. This one was um, a local county government needed expertise in infectious disease control through the School of Public Health and Infectious Disease. They worked out a deal. We signed a contract. Okay, so you can do these with governments. You can do this with for-profit business. This is uh, the creation of math and science curriculum for middle schoolers done by university under a public service contract with a private publisher. The talent that is brought to bear by the university is complemented in this contract with the talents to base a million dollars each, by the way, to develop this world-class curriculum, okay? Even in Berkeley, we have incredibly sophisticated, state-of-the-art nano etching equipment for our nano fabrication laboratory. Make a long story short, we made a deal. They wanted to bring a piece of equipment and show it off in the United States. We wanted that technology so we can teach our students and our faculty, and we made a deal. We got the piece of, uh, uh, for 20% 20, 20 on the dollar. And um, this is my favorite. This is an actual pending deal right now. And to make my point, I'm gonna take 30 seconds here with this here thing and say, there is a need in this country for community health metrics, which has a recognition of the social determinants of health. This is spot on with what Malin was talking about. But I found out about it. 
this is you know the group called the Enterprise. All these little people are the people who are. That's the girl. That's the girls. Like in other words, this is. I'm going to just use. I'm going to. I'm going to use just first names. This was Linda, who was who's a professor at Cal, who was here last year. At, this is Richard, who Linda and I got from UCSF. This is Ahmed. Everybody know Ahmed? That's Ahmed in his position at the Stanford. Stanford, UCSF, UC Berkeley will study in their respective counties the idea of a national standard. Okay, now, this is, uh, guess who this is? Cannon. Cannon. <laughs> yes, this is Valerie. Who, who has a software program to report qualitative uh, reporting of, we talked about how do you get qualitative, okay? This is uh, Carmen, who, who I met through Dano. Dano, this is Dano, who's, these two, of course, are both franchise. Institute for Wellness uh, is uh, over from, uh, who I met at, Maylin's house last time. She's in New Jersey. Um, okay, in our group right here, we have this little dress is Sandy. This is Dr. Tim, who's sitting over there. This is uh, Kimberly, who's sitting over there somewhere. Who else? Uh, what I did is I, I, I kind of did it in, in, so I didn't try to forget anybody. Tim, Sandy, Kimberly. Oh, John. John Matson. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, stop. I'm getting the stop. You mean I'm out of time? Okay. He missed the three and the one. Oh, am I over? Am I out? I can't tell if you stopped the joke or stopped the thing here. Okay. So, all right, ready. Let's keep. So, what it's not? It's not a research contract. It's not unfairly. It's not. Am I out of time? Yes. Oh, I didn't even know that. It's not a joke. Okay, okay. Just so you okay. know. Okay. So, because, okay. It's real. Okay, I'll stop with this one. So what I'm here to say is if a public service contract is you take a public university, you do service for the world under a contract for money, okay? So if you work, if you work, okay, stop, okay, time out. If you work for a government, this applies to you. If you work for a for-profit business, this applies to you. If you work for a, a nonprofit, this applies to you. If you work for, uh, who have I forgotten? Um, so in other words, I'm here to say that this is real. And if I had more time, I, would, I was planning to tell you about how you take on public higher education. How do you take that on? Oh, that's right. Okay, so we'll, let's let, save it for that. Okay, thank you.